Hey everybody, if you're an old subscriber, welcome back. And if you are brand new to the channel and to the show, guess what? So are we. This is our new movie review show called Take One, where we give you our first take on a movie we just saw. Um, today's cast is... I'm Eric. I'm Demetrius. I'm Milsa. And I'm Joe. We all just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So guys, what is our first take? So... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was written, directed, and produced by Quentin Jerome Tarantino. This film is about a actor in Hollywood and his stunt double and their declining careers, along with the rise of the Manson cult, the Manson family. And um, he basically just like rewrites history, like what would have happened if, you know, like things once, happen the way that Quentin Tar Tarantino wanted them Quentin to happen. Quentin Tarantino, okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like once so, a time. So, you may know Quentin Tarantino from his films such as Pulp Fiction and Glorious Bastards, his first film, which was Reservoir Dogs. He's really famous for his non-linear storylines, his the extensive use of violence in his films, his uh, foot fetish, uh, the use of very bad language, um, very famous for... What would you guys say, like, what else Being would you Being gratuitous. I would say for <laughs> using, like, very, a very strong cast. In all of his films, he uses a pretty strong mm -hmm. cast. Also, um, um, long takes. Really long takes. Very, very long takes. Very, very long shots. Very, very long scenes with, like, a lot of conversation packed into one scene, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. A lot of directors don't do that. Another thing I really like about Quentin Tarantino is that, like, like I said, nonlinear storylines. Um, he basically strays away from the typical journey of a hero, like inciting incident, rise of action, climax, fallout. He strays away from that completely, and he just tells a story, which I think is pretty unique and interesting. Um, overall, I thought this film was really fun. It was probably the funniest Quentin Tarantino movie I've ever seen, probably my favorite Quentin Tarantino movie yet so far. Um, he pretty much rewrites history like he did in Inglorious Bastards, and every single thing in this movie, it seems very slow paced, but every single thing, every single shot, every single flashback led to something, which I loved, which is kind of like in The Hateful Eight, where every single thing meant something. So, I, 10 out of 10, loved it. Eric, what do you think? Uh, well... People are going to hate me. I am not the biggest Quentin Tarantino fan. Um, I like Reservoir Dogs. I really like Django. I hated eight, Hateful Eight. I turned it off when everybody started puking. Um, this movie, though, yeah, I liked it. I, I did like it. Uh, like all of Quentin Tarantino's movies, they're very dense. They're very, like, every scene is packed full of stuff. Milsa stole what I was going to say, that every single foreshadow had a payoff. Every single little thing had a payoff somewhere. And I was wondering if they were going to get to all the little things, and they did. Um, yeah, but I gotta say, that, uh, even though it was um, uh, it, it, it was uh, a good movie, um, it, it took a long time. I, I was thinking, like, it's just a... I didn't know if they were actually going to get to anything by the end of the movie. Uh, it felt kind of like a, a really long episode of Seinfeld, directed by Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> like, a whole lot of nothing going on. <laughs> A whole lot of nothing for like the first two hours. It's a two hour and forty it's, minute it's movie. It's very shy of three hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just getting shy up there. of three hours. Yeah. So, um, but because Quentin Tarantino, the one thing that I do like about him, the long takes that are very, yeah. very dense. He's a master of pacing. Even though there's nothing going on, the movie moves along at quite I... a, like a responsible pace to the to the to the content of what's going on. Just to bounce off of that, like the shots he uses, everything is framed so beautifully, and there could be a shot that like goes on for 15 seconds, but it works. Yeah. Like there was a shot in the beginning that I loved where it was a close up on lips on a billboard, and then it zooms out. I remember that. Well, you know, and um, it goes to the back seat of a car where Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are in the car together. And I just thought that was so cool how, like, you can zoom in on something, you don't even know what the hell it is, and then, like, go out, and then, like, thus begins the story. I, yeah, that's very <laughs> true. That's very, I couldn't tell whose lips it was. I, I yeah, thought no. it's either going to be Brad Pitt's or it's going to be Leonardo DiCaprio's. Of course, it's Leonardo DiCaprio's because he's the actor. He's not the stunt double. Brad Pitt plays the stunt double. And, uh, there, yeah, like, there was another scene where it was just, uh, just 
driving, but it didn't show anything except for the background and a hood ornament. Mm -hmm. And the hood ornament was like this little flying bird lady, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, like, like that. <laughs> what was the car? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's they said it in the movie. Long shots, but it, it worked. I mm -hmm. loved it. Everything is so beautifully framed. So so beautifully. That is, that is one thing. Even though I don't like Quentin Tarantino as a director overall because of the gratuity and um, some of his choices and um, just the way he does things, I think it's just sometimes I think he goes a little bit too far. I think he's a little bit over the top. Um, I do like the way he paces things. I do like the way he shoots things. I like all the angles. I like all the shots. I like... It's really, really captivating. He is very talented in a lot of in a lot of ways. So you like him as a director? Um, what all I'm hearing right now is that you like him as a director. <laughs> yeah. I like a lot of the things he does. I don't like his movies overall. I, I love him as a director. As a person, he's a little questionable. Yeah, <laughs> you could say, say that. But I've loved pretty much all of his movies. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like be that one lady. I don't know if you guys ever seen that interview of him where the one lady was like trying to bash him on television for like mm. for being too violent for his oh, films. Yeah. The, that, <laughs> this movie actually I feel like went back to that because there was a scene in the movie where I don't know her name but it was a girl sitting in the back seat. She was the one talking about how Hollywood was the one that taught us how to kill. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. it goes back to that and they said okay yeah. let's kill the, the people that taught us family. how to kill and I feel like that was like a good callback to that interview. <laughs> that and then spoiler alert spoiler alert yes. not to cut you off spoiler <laughs> alert um, then Quentin T Tarantino shows his true thoughts on the matter and he kills those people. That think that, that yeah, <laughs> in horrible, kind of horrible hilarious. ways. And this is actually one of the times in a, a Tarantino movie where I actually enjoyed. I, I did like the, all the killing in Django, and um, I liked all the killing in this movie because he killed the right people in the right ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I yeah. really enjoyed that because in history, the murder of Sharon Tate. It's like you, we know these people as being like very infamous, and like the murder of Sharon Tate, they was a huge thing when it first happened. So we know how bad these people are. We know that they're following Charles Manson, and to see them get killed in the funniest ways is just <laughs> great. He yeah. rewrites history, and that was what I think is really great because you can't really do that with a story that not a lot of people know, and everybody knows the Sharon Tate murder. Yeah, and the Sharon Tate thing, like, if she would have gotten murdered, you know, which, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. were probably expecting to happen, if she would yeah. have gotten murdered, like, the way that uh, he made you fall in love with her character, the way she goes and watches herself, and she's mm -hmm. so proud of the way she acts in, her, in, in the yeah. film, because she goes and watches her, her own film in the movie, and, like, you actually, Margot Robbie, with, like, I don't know, seven lines in the movie, you actually fall in love with that character, <laughs> yeah. you're like, oh, this girl's so yeah, cute. Yeah, she's very she's so... relatable. Yeah. Because you can tell tell that like just by that like she's, one scene where she's watching herself you can tell so much about her character exactly she's looking around like look she's so happy that people are enjoying her scenes mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's so very nice giddy. it's very yeah. nice heartwarming yeah, it's heartwarming yeah. it's very, so uh and that's really what sharon who sharon tate was <laughs> she was a very nice like lovable human so when that happened that, that like shocked the entire world they were like not <laughs> sharon tate one thing about Quentin Tarantino is that he breaks all of the rules. All of the movie mm -hmm. rules. He crosses the line. <laughs> 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 he does, I like does a not lot. give <laughs> a dang about film theory because there, it all of it is really just theory. And Quentin Tarantino is a director that can point. really utilize all of those different mm -hmm. rules, I guess, in movies. Yeah. So one thing that... He subverts them. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Like, one thing I really enjoyed about once upon a time in Hollywood, is that we were all expecting a story to happen. What was her name again? <laughs> Duh, we're all expecting a story. But like, Sharon was, Tate. Yes, Sharon when Tate. When she was in the movie, that movie that she was watching was around the time where yes. she was killed in real life. So right. we were like, oh shit, now she's eight and a half months right. pregnant. She's about to get fucking murdered. Yes. And, and it didn't happen. So yeah. what I was getting to is that Quentin Tarantino... He, like what Milsa was saying, he rewrites history. So if you look back to Inglourious Bastards, everyone was expecting Adolf Hitler to die, you know, just to die. But we, were, we weren't expecting the way he died. He died in a movie theater. He was caught on fire and shot up, I believe, right? That was the ending of Inglourious Bastards. Now, in this movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, everyone was expecting Sharon to die and the movie to be about Sharon, but that's not what it was. So I think Quentin Tarantino does a great way of having the whole audience expect expecting one thing, but then completely flipping the story. So we are all expecting Sharon to die, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're all expecting to die, but when when Cliff when Cliff Booth started 
killing all of them. <laughs> I had no idea where the story was going. I was like, okay, what is happening? Yeah. What's going on right now? And it really brought me back to Inglorious Bastards because we were all expecting one thing, but yet Quentin Tarantino rewrote history and he did whatever he wanted to do. And also, his movies don't start off with, like, a based on a true story. He creates his own story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just one thing that's super cool about Quentin Tarantino. Now, a couple of the negative things I have to say about the movie is that this definitely wasn't one of, in my opinion, this wasn't one of Quentin Tarantino's best movies. Um, I don't think that the movie had, like, like a plot, you know? Uh, I wasn't really sure where the story was going a couple of times. I wasn't really sure about it. Um... I didn't think the pacing was, like, good for my liking, but I'm a different moviegoer than other people. So, another thing is, is that, I don't know, I'm the type of person to look at a movie and, like, figure out what's wrong with it. And there was a scene where I, honestly, I put Quentin Tarantino on too high of a pedestal, but there was a scene where I thought the shot was, like, super overexposed and... I wasn't having that. And then there was another point where it was like towards the very end where the flares were in the scene because the ambulance had just left the scene. There were flares there. And then in the next shot, there weren't flares there. So I'm just like, Quentin Tarantino, what's going on? You do not do this. And I don't know. I just feel like that this movie, I just don't feel like this is one of Quentin Tarantino's best movies. I didn't notice all those little things because I'm not a pretentious moviegoer. Hey, you know what? I'm a I'm filmmaker, not a Ryan, so for, I need I'm to do I'm not a things. Rotten Tomatoes critic. I'm with you. I didn't notice a lot of the stuff you said, but I'm pretentious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, you got to pay attention to those things because we're all filmmakers yeah, here. Yeah, well, you do. Okay, we're all, <laughs> we're all film majors. Aspiring, yes. like, aspiring film majors. And yes. this one... Not I, so much. I built the wall. He built. He's the set designer. Okay, Donald but Trump. I, okay. I did. <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Nothing like that at all. No, I did notice a, a continuity type of thing. Uh, uh, an error. Um, the the pussy girl, whatever her name was. <laughs> her name was pussy. Uh, put on whatever. Um, the pussy girl. <laughs> She, uh, she, apparently, she got hitchhikers to, you know, she hitchhiked home to the Spawn Ranch, like, every day, so apparently she's getting people to drive her there every day, and then she shows up with, uh, with, uh, Cliff Booth, and they're like, what's and going on? All of a sudden, on? it's a problem. All, all of a sudden, it's a problem, and everybody's like, well, uh, he... yes. And that's a, that's a, uh, uh, more, more so about that. Say, well, everybody was confused about why she showed up with a hitchhiker, which is like apparently something she did all the time. So that was confusing. I'm like, that's there's something strange about that yes. if she does I it every day. But that was also a great that whole thing with the with the hippies. He definitely subverted your hippies. expectations. Like, it, there was a guy. Was it George? Yeah. There was a guy named George. I thought they were all gonna kill him and they were gonna like yeah. gang up on him. I thought something crazy was gonna happen. No, yeah. everything happened like it was just straight up when it was I, everything yeah. was leading you to think that something else was gonna happen. Yeah, Definitely. that was great. I was <laughs> yes. really expecting murders and yeah, I was expecting <laughs> yes. like a dead body in the house. Yes, right. Like, like a gang like, bang or like, something. I thought it was gonna be like to psycho. Happen. Like I thought it was gonna be like psycho, like I've been hiding George in like this room for all these years and it's like flies this de- buzzing yeah, about right. it. Like a decaying <laughs> corpse. Yeah, because yeah, exactly they were all acting like nobody goes to see George. Yeah. He right. doesn't exist. But it's just like no he really was napping. Okay. Right, exactly. like, yeah, okay. that was actually really funny. They were like, "Don't wake him up because he falls asleep during TV time." <laughs> and he, he's like, "Yeah, I like to watch my TV shows later." FBI. It's like, that was the whole. It was the true right. story. Yeah. Yeah. And the what was her name? She Red was like headed. a real person in uh, real life. Dakota She's Fanning. based off of a real person in real life. It wasn't Dakota Fanning, though, was it? Yeah, yeah that, that was, was Dakota, Dakota Fanning. Fanning. Oh, wow. She's yeah. A, yeah. Did they put makeup on her? Like, what did they do? Probably. I did not recognize her right away. <laughs> I thought it kind of was, but I was like, no, nah, it doesn't look enough <laughs> like her to be her. Okay, so honestly, overall, uh, out of 10, I'll give this movie probably a 6.5. Five, just because it wasn't there for me like the most exciting thing didn't happen until the, the last act mm-hmm. so anyway those are my thoughts on it joe what do you think so i've only seen a handful of tarantino's movies but i really really love this one mm-hmm. i surprised like i went into it not knowing much about it i saw the trailer once and i was like okay good enough and she really wanted to see it so we had I'm to all see so it together so excited to see this movie it was really funny rick dalton's whole journey like 
Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> he's use- useless. He's, yeah, <laughs> like he's going through this crisis as an actor, and that was really funny that to was watch. And it was also really heartwarming when the little girl is like, "That was the best acting I've ever seen." He's like, "Like that was really nice to watch." I gotta say something though. Kid actors, they always do weird things with their eyes when they're talking. Like they memorize their line and they're getting it just right. She looked towards the camera in a way that somebody wouldn't do in real life. Kid actors always do that. I didn't notice it. I thought I didn't she was it. really. I thought funny. she was okay. Yeah. I no, thought she, she was. was a no, good I thought actor. she was great. But kid actors always do that. My favorite part is when she was shoved to the ground. So <laughs> she's like, "I got elbow pads on." Yeah. Um, I think my favorite thing about this movie was the sound design. Like, I don't know why I just suddenly paid I attention thought to that. The exact I thought it was same great thing throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is absolutely outstanding. Yeah, and one part what really stood out to me, not necessarily with sound effects, but with music choice, um, when they played Mrs. Robinson, it brought me back mm-hmm. to The Graduate, where there's an older woman. Um, you know, kind of chase like a cougar chasing after a younger guy, but this time it was kind of like an older guy, Brad Pitt, looking at a younger girl. I thought it was a nice parallel, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Hmm. Yes, um, and there's tons of parallels yeah. in the movie, like uh, Baby, Ooh. You're Out of Town. Like when they showed when they showed Robin, or no, not Robin, when they showed Sharon on screen when they first yeah. showed that she was pregnant, and then uh, what's the director from? Uh, Rosemary's Baby, Roman what's his name? Polinsky. Yes, Roman Polinsky. When he was away out of town, they played a song that was saying, baby, you're out of town. And that was what really yeah. got me thinking, like, okay, she's about to die now. I <laughs> think it was really cool that the little girl, what was her name, Marabella? Her character's yes, name, Marabella. Marabella. Yeah. She was reading a book about Walt Disney. And in a lot of Walt Disney, a lot of Disney movies, you take a really, really, really tragic story and they turn it into something beautiful. Beauty and the Beast, yeah. Snow White. They turn it into something <laughs> beautiful. But with this movie, he takes a, you know, the murder of Sharon Tate, he takes a really, really, like, terrible thing that happened to this woman and her friends in her house. And, he and then he turns it, it into something cool. Yeah. Yes, he did. So I think that's kind of cool that he kind of did that. I don't know if that was intentional. It probably was. I bet it was. That because makes like a lot of sense. Disney does that, mm-hmm. and he did that. <laughs> yeah. Um, going along with the pacing, what you were saying earlier, he, oh, I think he did a really great job with the pacing, except for yeah. I thought it lagged maybe a little in the middle when we were following Cliff to the hippie place, but then it all paid off in the end, so I don't yeah. mind it. The, the, that scene paid off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That scene paid off. It was a li- like, <laughs> there was another part toward the end when the hippies were like, let's go kill everyone in Hollywood. And they were walking like 15 years down the road. And I was like, get up the road already. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think if, yeah. if anybody else were to make this movie and try to do it the same way, they probably would have failed. Mm-hmm. Like it would have yeah. been the most boring. It, it would have mm-hmm. been so boring, boring with how much nothing yeah. happened for the first two hours and thirty-two yeah. minutes. I feel like if any other director <laughs> directed this, it would have been a lot more fast-paced and, and wouldn't have paid off at the end. They would have yeah. cut out all the all the little interesting mm-hmm. parts you were talking about, like the flamethrower. Yeah. Oh, we I love that. Oh, the payoff for Burned that her to a crisp. The dog. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That entire yeah. scene in in um Cliff's like a little mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Little mobile home. That I was like, that, w- that was such a slow scene, but it paid off in the mm-hmm. end. Mm-hmm. I yes. think... Oh, my God. They went full Evil Dead on the ending. Oh, my God. Because he made a ragdoll. That was... <laughs> Yeah, I can right honestly say that that is probably my, one of my favorite movie endings that <laughs> I have seen great. in my life. It paid off. The entire movie paid Perfect off. Movie mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, not only did, like, the Cannot entire film... Speak high enough of this film. Yes, like, it was just such a joy to watch on screen. I thought every shot was framed so beautifully. Mm-hmm. Everything looked so gorgeous. And then, at the end, with all the blood and all the action, it was, like, even better. It was, yeah. It was so much fun to watch. With a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies, we see violence and gore throughout the entire movie. I was waiting for that. I was like, there's no gore in this movie. There's no, like, scary violence. And at the end, it was like, yeah, holy oh. fuck. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. They cram it all into, like, that last ten minutes. And it was amazing. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. i got to say another thing. This is uh, probably the um, the most I've enjoyed Brad Pitt probably since Moneyball. <laughs> like, I... And t- before that was a long time. Like, I, I, I haven't enjoyed a lot of uh, Brad Pitt's more recent mm-hmm. movies. But I actually... I really liked him in this. Yeah. He actually... He, he, he did great. Everything he about sure it was great. I don't like him as a person. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Eric, I could not agree with you more. I think the Jen casting Aniston. for this movie was phenomenal. I would not have picked any other actors to do it besides Leonardo DiCaprio. I can and think Brad of a Pitt. couple. Honestly, I think <laughs> their dynamic great. was they just were amazing. <laughs> yes. And you guys are like giving this movie a lot of credit, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to knock it down a little bit. Honestly, like I felt like this movie was trying to be something that it wasn't. I feel like that a lot about other Tarantino movies. I didn't feel that way about this I one, but not, I know the yeah. feeling. Yes. I know what you, you mean. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, like, I understand that. For example, this movie, I feel like at least, I feel like the theme was like a 90s or 80s sitcom. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the editing was kind of like that as well. Like there's a scene where he's putting dog food in the bowl and then the dog like responds to him with a bark. And that's just like, that's such that a cliche thing to do. And like... The Brady's brunch or something like that. It was just I don't I don't know. Oh, I, I felt like the that. movie I was totally like see yes. I like feel like Barney. Yeah, exactly. from a certain Very from a certain cheesy. point of view. From like mm-hmm. if you look at it a certain way, it definitely has that. Yes, and I feel like there were a lot of moments. For that I don't know. I don't know. He could have been. I feel like he was because that's the way it was. I don't know. I felt like this movie was taking us through not only like a, a revelation through like this character, uh, Rick Dalton. Mm-hmm. It was also the like time? yes, the it was period. also like how film changes and what people want to see on film. So it was like the theme of the film changed, and then also the tone of the film changed. So what I mean by that is, there were just scenes in the movie where I feel like having, I don't know how to word this, some scenes felt forced. Like, it was forced to be some kind of 90s sitcom show, and I, it just wasn't working for me. I, this movie just did not work for me, but that does not mean I did not enjoy the movie. I really enjoyed it. I, de- I definitely know exactly what you... I, in, in a lot of other Quentin Tarantino movies, I feel like he just tries to force things upon... Like, this is what I want you to be thinking and feeling right now, and it's like, it just... A lot of times it doesn't work for me. For me, the, in particular, this movie did work for me for some uh, uh, so i don't know but i definitely understand where you're coming from i i have that uh in in other tarantino movies it, it, this one worked for me though good um mm-hmm. there were two things in the movie that i didn't hate i really liked but they kind of threw me off at first the first thing is when they pulled an end game on us and they were like six months later yeah I was like, what? I was like, what's yeah. happening <laughs> what's happening yeah, yeah i thought the same thing yeah. right. <laughs> totally threw me for a loop um didn't like, say but that nothing coming. happened yet yeah. six months yeah. later from what exactly yeah. like yeah. that was that was another issue i had with the pacing because like there was a moment in the movie where it's just five minutes of exposition and like hey okay here here's what the character's doing now okay now here's what what Here's what they're doing. And in movies, you're not really supposed to do that. That's more so like a crutch on movies. But it works. The audience there wants... was narration. The narration. Well, yeah, it, the narration... It was, came out of it was nowhere. Cool, but like with at, one of the characters. I've right. Talk about that. <laughs> right. Me as a filmmaker, I just wanted to see the action happening. I didn't want to hear someone telling me that this stuff is happening. I just wanted I to see it on screen. I thought it was done tastefully and very well. Like the scene at the party where there, there was mm-hmm. that guy like saying... Oh, that girl was married to him, but then they broke off their marriage to get with that girl and that guy. Blah blah blah. I, think I thought that was the, a really clever the... way of telling a past. Yeah, exposition. Yeah, yeah. That was really clever. I, I think that's not like I don't. I don't consider that as exposition. I think that's just giving you character information yeah, character. rather than mm-hmm. giving you exposition. Because yeah. like it's they were telling you, okay, what's happening in the movie? Okay, here he's doing this now. Let's yeah. narrate what he's doing. Like the and voiceover then, narration. Right. Right. What I want to mm-hmm. say about that is I wanted more of it because it was Kurt Russell, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. It seemed to come at, like, randomly. they seldom yeah. used it. It came very randomly, like, only twice in the movie. Once kind of toward the beginning and then a lot at the end. And I was yeah. like, I would have liked that strung more throughout it, a little more balanced. Or it, not at all. Mm-hmm. Or not at all. Do one or the other. But I liked I, it. I liked it, though. I, I wish it was done like a little narration. bit better. It felt very very Tarantino. Yeah. I like one narration thing, in films. I gotta say, I gotta say, um, I'm not entirely sure... Uh, if I like how they did Bruce Lee, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I, I, I thought it was hilarious. It was funny. It was. That was I absolutely that. hilarious. Was funny. But was I was kind of. And the actor confused. who played him did a great job. I agree. That was I will say I feel like they disrespected it, Bruce Lee. Yeah. He they is, definitely did. He, is, he <laughs> Maybe was they have some sort the of best beef. fighter ever. Maybe they do have some sort of beef, but they made him look like a tool. Yeah. And by they, he I mean was, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. It was the he, real but it was, t- yes. it was hilarious. Oh, my God. Yes. This Probably Bruce one of the best Lee, scenes. <laughs> yes, I agree. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, I think we're so, all in agreement that I, I think this is Quentin Tarantino's funniest movie. Definitely yeah, mm-hmm. funniest. What was the best joke? 
you felt useless. <laughs> I like when the redheaded girl was getting her face smashed and everything. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I can agree. I gotta say one thing. Speaking from the black community, he does not use the N word not once. So I thought yeah. is this the first wow. movie he doesn't do that? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the first yeah. movie he doesn't do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, look hey. at that audio, man. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's whatever. I recommend the movie. Um, out of ten. I give it uh, 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 four and a half stars. Okay. Out um, of five, five stars. Huh. I, don't, I, thought, I thought you were doing it out of ten. I was like, okay. I was actually really pissed. Out of five stars out of ten. No, I, I, out, of, out of five stars, I'd probably give it four stars. Yeah. Okay. Um, I okay. can't speak highly enough about this movie. I really enjoyed it. I had such a fun time. I don't give number ratings, but I should say uh, you should go see it. It was a whole lot of fun, especially all the gory bits. Those were the best parts. I 110% would recommend this film. I think that you should watch this film. I think you should go spend money on this film. I think you should go see it once, twice, three times, maybe. Because apparently three has something to do with this movie, but you should definitely go see it. Um, I'm going to go see it again. I give it a 10 out of 10. Um, that's awesome. all I have to say. Okay. Yes. So, not everyone is going to love the same movie and not everyone is going to hate the same movie <laughs> and all of our opinions and all of our views are very subjective so if you want to see a good movie and have a good time go check out once upon a time in hollywood Thank if you, you. want to see a good quentin, you. if you want to see a directed well directed quentin tarantino movie then this is a movie for you but if you're expecting something new then this might not be the movie for you all right so that is our first take on once upon a time in hollywood don't knock Groot over. <laughs> Poor baby Groot. He just wants to dance his oh, life away. Um, okay. So, <laughs> once again, if you have strong opinions... Okay, Mills, so I'm not going to do this if you keep knocking Groot over. <laughs> you got to leave him alone. He just wants to dance. Okay, you gotta let him fine. Work. Okay. Stop. <laughs> so that... I'm going to wait till you put the water down, too. Take your time. <laughs> no one's little... waiting on you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I think she just threw up. That was my bad karma for Groot. I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm so Groot sorry. Oh, that's so funny. Oh my now god, I almost All threw right. up. Don't, don't, don't drink it. <laughs> right, what no, are you let's, doing? Let's have more. What are you doing? <laughs> you crazy person. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Actually, gonna wrap this up now. <laughs> okay. We good? Yes. <laughs> All right. So that was our first take on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. If you've seen this movie, sound off down below. Let us know what you think, if you liked it, if you hated it. If you agree with us, if you didn't agree with us, um, we'll all take the time to respond to you because we want to have a conversation. So um, with that, I think we're going to sign off from everyone here at Take One. Have a great day. Bye. <sighs> Peace out. <laughs>